What's going on guys? Reporting once again from Beaumont, California. Specifically this uh, community park by my house. Anyway, this vlog is gonna be about two sessions I played last week. And they were across both of the Los Angeles major live streams, Hustler Casino Live and Live at the Bike. Now these two streams weren't like any other streams. They were both actually unique in their own way. The first one, which was Hustler uh, last Wednesday, that one ended up turning into a 50, 100, 200. That's much bigger than I normally play. So that was by far the biggest No Limit game I've ever played. And the second stream, the Live at the Bike one, was special to me because I finally got to meet and play with Garrett, who uh, I don't know if you guys know, is my favorite player. So that was a really cool experience. One announcement to make before we get into the hands. This Sunday, there is a meetup game happening with myself and Rampage, AKA Ethan, and it's a none other than Las Vegas. That's right, I'm going to Vegas this upcoming weekend. I'm gonna be there like either Thursday or Friday, uh, all the way through Sunday. And if you guys wanna come play some 2-5, grab a drink, hang out, whatever, that's gonna be Sunday at 1 p.m. MGM Grand Poker Room. Give them a call, get on the list, and come out on Sunday and exchange some chips with myself and Rampage. Anyway, that's it for now. Let's get into the first stream, Hustler Casino Live. This is a pretty action lineup. We're playing 25-50 with a $50 big blind ante. Let's go. All right, guys, here we go. Starting off with 25-50-100, no limit. Like I said, this game converted to a 50-100-200, but not for a few hands at least. In the first one, I'm in the $100 straddle and we see an open from late position to 400. I defend with queen jack and we go heads up to a flop of jack 8 8. I check, he bets 600, and I call. The turn is a 7, I check again and this time he checks back. The river comes a 6, I don't really see a point in betting so I check it one last time, but now he bets $700. Not a very fun spot for me, since I would hardly ever expect him to bluff on this board for that size. But at the same time, I'm getting a good price and who knows, maybe he is bluffing. I've never met this guy before. So I end up making the call, but as expected, he's got me beat with three of a kind. Moving right along, next we pick up Queen-8 suited in middle position. There's an open from the player on my right to $300 and I decide to make it $1,000. Not something I would do with this hand very often, but once in a while, I think it's fine. Anyway, he makes the call, and we see a flop of King Jack 6 with one heart. He checks, and I continue with a bet of $600. He makes the call, which isn't ideal, but after we turn a flush draw, I'm just going to keep betting. There would be plenty of times where I actually do have something strong on this board, so why not? This time, I size up to 3000 and after some thought, he lets it go. Well executed, Mariano. In the following hand, there's a $200 straddle on before the cutoff raises to $800. I'm in the small blind with a suited ace, but not a very good one. This hand should probably either be a fold or raise, I'm guessing. This time, I make it $4,000 to go, and only the initial raiser calls. Heads up to a flop of jack 8 6 with two spades. Just a terrible flop for me, so I check, but he checks it back. The turn gives us top pair, but it does bring in the flush. Still a clear check for me. And once again, he checks it back. The river is the 9 of diamonds, giving us a final board that's just way better for him than me, so I check one final time. But now he fires out $6,000. 6, ah, fuck. Yeah. Exactly. This would be a really good fold. I don't know how he can make it. Again, he's in one of those situations where his opponent almost always has value. Once again, a tough spot on the river. Only this time, it's for a lot more money. 
Let's see, folding top hair after checking three times seems somewhat absurd. But on the other hand, I think it's likely we're up against two pair, a set, maybe even a straight or a slow played flush. So yeah, it takes me a while to decide, but eventually I do decide on a fold. At this point, the game is officially changed to 50, 100, 200. Sadly, I get dealt nothing playable for about an hour until finally I look down at king three suited in late position. Not great, but it's something. So I raise it up to 600 and get called only by Nick Vertucci in the big blind. Flop comes 5-4-3 all diamonds. He checks in, I check it back with just bottom pair. The turn is another four, which seems decent to me. Now he leads out for $900 and considering that I'm still beating all hands that missed on the flop, I make the call. The river is the queen of clubs, which shouldn't really change anything unless he somehow was bluffing with a queen in his hand. However, Nick doesn't seem to mind it because he bets again, this time $3,000. <sighs> Man, so many close decisions today. And once again, it takes me a few moments to figure it out. Not something I really like doing on stream since playing slow is just bad for the game. But I can't really control when these kind of spots come up. There it is. So yeah, that one works out, but guess what's coming up next? Yep, another tough spot. All right, in this one I open queen jack to 600 and get three callers. We flop top pair on queen eight full rainbow, but considering that we're four ways and the board is fairly dry, I think it's a good spot to check and see what the other guys want to do. Well, the player on my left bets a thousand and I'm the only caller. Heads up to a 10 on the turn, I check again, and this time he bets 2000. Already a somewhat sketchy situation, but still I can't fold after under repping my hand like this. So I call again and we see a five on the river. I check a third time, but my opponent disagrees and quickly bets out $5,000. Okay, so what to do now? Sure, all the flush draws missed, but aside from that, I can't really beat anything. There's plenty of two pair and straight possibilities, and all the single pairs that I beat would probably check back at this point. So unless he's just got like a random air ball, it's not looking too good for me. Still, it sucks to fold a hand that I was technically trapping with, but that's what I ended up doing. Vegas Vin was kind enough to show me his hand, and luckily this time, it was a good fold. That brings us to the final hand of this session, which is quite the memorable one. There's a limp from the cutoff before a suited Superman raises to $900 on the button. Action folds to me in the straddle and I look down at pocket kings. Definitely good enough to raise, so I make it 4,200 to go and only Superman makes the call. Heads up to an amazing flop of ace king five with two spades. I continue with a small bet and he calls. The turn is an offsuit seven, looks good to me, so this time I bet $8,000. Looking back, I wish I would have gone a little bigger here, but anyway, he thinks it over for a while and makes the call again. So quite a big pot brewing now, and it seems we're up against a big ace or perhaps a flush draw. Fingers crossed for a good river card, and you won't believe it, we get the best one in the deck. Oh my god. Quads again. Suited makes the flush. That's right, we make four of a kind against a flush, and it's time to go for the max. If he's got an ace, he's probably gonna fold, maybe not. If he's got a flush, he's definitely not gonna fold. Well, these are the spots that poker dreams are made of. All in. All in. Mariano knows that Suited made a flush. Gross. Really gross spot here. Against anyone else, this is a snap fold. But Mariano is very capable. Mariano, that was a little quick, really he, quick all in. It was. He's going to have bluffs with like everything he does. He knows the fold. Can he execute? Mariano's been executing all night. 
can suited Superman as well. Yes, he can. Well done, seat five. Well, maybe I should have said these are the spots that poker nightmares are made of because my opponent ends up making a ridiculous fold and completely owns my soul in the process. Still, it was a really cool hand, and I'm glad it was captured on stream. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this particular night, but stay tuned for day two. Right, so that was quite the game. I didn't exactly pick up too many hands, aside from the quad kings, obviously, but really not much going on for myself aside from that. Overall though, I still managed to book a nice win. I think I won like seven or $8,000. Definitely not gonna complain about that amount of money, but at the same time, it's not a lot given the size of that particular game. Anyway, that brings us to the following day, which was Thursday. I headed over to Bicycle Casino, which is now owned by Bally's, I think. All I know is I got invited to play on a live stream, so I showed up. The game was 2550. Naturally, it ended up playing as a 2550 100. But like I mentioned at the start of the video, I got to play with Garrett, got to meet him, and it was awesome. And we did get involved in a few hands together. So that being said, let's jump into that session. Let's go. All right, guys, here we go again, this time playing 2550-100 on Live at the Bike. Just like the previous stream, I sit down with $50,000 and get involved early on with King Jack. There's no straddle on this hand, so I race to 200 over a limper and get raised by the accountant to 700. Action folds back to me, and for some reason, I was catching some weak vibes when he re-raised, so I decided to put in a bluff of my own to 1700. He thinks it over for a bit and makes the call. So just like that, we're off to a flop of queen 10, five rainbow. He checks to me and with an open-ended straight draw and a flop that favors me more, I'm definitely gonna keep betting. So I throw out a $1,000 chip and to my surprise, he now raises to 3,500. In the moment, I thought this was odd because I would imagine he just calls with a strong hand in case I'm bluffing. Obviously, you guys can see the cards, and I'm dead wrong, but that's what I was thinking real time. So instead, I interpreted this as a weak hand, like one pair, or perhaps a straight draw of his own, and I figured we could get a lot of folds from hands like those. So after some deliberation, I jam all in, and of course get snap called. So a pretty big misstep on my part to start the night, but there's always plan B, which is to actually make my straight, right? Any ace or nine will do the trick. However, neither of those come. We do end up rivering top pair though, so if he had like ace queen, now we win. But as you can all see, he flopped top two and we're down a bunch of money to start the night. Here you can see Garrett helping to count his stack, making sure I pay the correct amount. Thanks so much, Garrett, very helpful. And we move on to the second hand where I add on for $20,000 and get dealt 10 nine of hearts. There's a limp from the button, I make it $500 from the small blind, and only the limper calls. Heads up to a flop of eight three deuce with two hearts, I bet $1,000 and he calls. The turn is great, the deuce of hearts pairing the bottom and giving me a flush. However, I would often check this card with over pairs, so occasionally checking a flush seems reasonable. That's what I do this time, and now the accountant bets $1,000 himself. I call and we see the 10 of spades on the river. I check again and this time he fires out 2,500. It for sure doesn't feel like a bluff. So the question is, do we want to raise or just call? On one hand, I expect to have the best hand almost always. So raising seems fine. But on the other hand, it would suck to raise and then face an all in or get called by a better hand. So after some thought, I decide to make a kind of conservative call and unfortunately, we were up against one of the few hands that we beat and would have called a raise as he had three of a kind. Oh well, at least we're treading back in the right direction. In the next one, Armenian Mike raises to 300 in the small blind and I call next to act with ace nine suited. We flop top pair, but when he checks, I just check it back since we're either way ahead or way behind, I think. 
The turn is a beautiful offsuit nine, giving me aces up. This time Mike bets $600, and once again, I just call, considering that it would be quite difficult to be raising as a bluff in this situation. And the river is yet another welcome sight, another nine, giving us a hidden full house. Now he bets $700, leaving himself around 3600 behind. Nothing for me to do here but jam all in, and he quickly makes the call. I turn it over, and we win, so it looks like I got pretty lucky on that run out. In the next interesting hand, Garrett opens from late position to 300, the button calls, and I defend the straddle with Jack-6 suited. The flop comes Queen-Jack-4, which checks around. The turn is an ace, also checks around, and the river is a 10, so now any king makes a straight. I check a third time, but Garrett fires out $1,000. Colleen folds on the button, and it's back on me. Okay, so obviously my hand is garbage, but for all intents and purposes, it's just as good as any other pair on the board since his bet represents either a straight or nothing. But how likely is he to have a king after raising preflop and checking on this flop? I think most of his hands that contain a king would have bet since they would likely have had backdoor straight or flush draws. Maybe he checks king queen sometimes, king jack possibly, but those hands seem unlikely, especially with two jacks and a queen already accounted for. So this is a long-winded explanation as to why I ended up calling, and luckily this time it works out. Yep, so a nice man. call there from Mariano. Why are you fuck up my action, Mike? <laughs> you fold if you don't say nothing. Yeah, yeah, you're saying. Yeah, but it's because of what you said. Pair. It's because of what you said. I was about to fold and I heard Mike. <laughs> yeah. In a minute. Wait. Know something. Mike's <laughs> rambling on nonsensically. I'm calling. <laughs> <laughs> this is for sure a bluff. A few minutes later, I pick up pocket queens in middle position and raise it up to 300. The player on my left calls and we go heads up to a flop of 863 with two clubs. This is a flop I would check almost always, and this time is no exception. He checks back, and we see the 10 of hearts on the turn. I check again, but this time he bets out $600. He's only got around $2,500 remaining, so if he's got me beat, so be it. I check raise all in, hoping to commit his stack with any of the available draws out there, or perhaps a worse pair, and after a few seconds, he does make the call. I show right away, feeling like I've got the best hand, at least for now, and sure enough, after the king of clubs comes on the river, he mucks. So things didn't start off very well, but definitely going better now. By the way, I know some of the graphics aren't accurate on this stream. They recently remodeled, so it's a work in progress. Next, Garrett raises to $300 from under the gun. Two people call, and I look down at King Jack suited in the straddle. Could go either way here between raising or calling. Considering that the raise came from early position, I decide to just call this time, and we go to a flop of king-queen-10 with one club. Action checks around, and we turn a flush draw to go along with our top pair and straight draw. Action checks to Garrett again, who this time bets out $600. Armenian Mike calls in the big blind, and I of course call as well. The river brings no help, sadly, but we might have the best hand anyway. Mike checks, I check, and now Garrett bets $5,000. Quite a big bet, and it's probably not a bluff considering that he bet the turn into three opponents. But at the same time, if anyone's capable, it's him. Mike gets out of the way, and I make a somewhat speculative call, and of course end up losing versus a turn set of sixes. Nice hand, Mr. Adelstein. This one goes to him, and it's for a lot more money than our previous battle. At this point in the night, a few players have left, so we're playing four or five handed, and this hand comes up where it folds to me in the middle blind with king nine suited. Against a strong player in a blind versus blind setup, I'll usually just limp all my hands and then when facing a raise, I'll either fold, call, or re-raise myself. So I toss in the extra 50, and then Garrett raises to 400. My hand in particular could be a call or a raise. This time I choose to raise, I make it $2,000 to go, and he calls. Heads up out of position to a flop of king seven deuce with two diamonds. I continue with a small bet and he calls. The turn is a three of spades introducing a second flush draw and this time I size up to $6,000. Could make a case for checking actually considering that my hand isn't really very good, but here we are. 
He makes the call again, and we get a very nice river card, the Deuce of Hearts. I'm not sure another bet makes much sense, so this time I check it and prepare for the worst. Luckily, it doesn't come to that as he checks it back, and we take down a decent pot. That brings us to the last hand of the night, playing four-handed now. I open ace-deuce suited on the button to $300. Garrett makes it $1,500 from the small blind. Then Armenian Mike cold calls in the straddle, and I call as well. Three ways to an incredible flop for me, ace three deuce with two spades. I would expect Garrett to check a fair amount on this board, and sure enough that's what he does. Mike checks as well, and I place a small bet of $1,200. This keeps my hand somewhat disguised, I think, as I could also play some draws this way. Only Garrett makes the call, and we go heads up to the five of hearts on the turn. This is a pretty lame card, not because I necessarily expect him to have a three, but just because it makes it hard to get value from top pair or whatever. He checks again, and I continue betting, thinking that I would often use this card to bluff if I had any sort of draw, but unfortunately, he makes a wise fold despite getting a good price. Anyway, that was the last interesting pot of the evening. As always, I hope you all enjoyed the hands. So that wraps up two days of live stream action in Los Angeles. Overall, I think I won around three or $4,000 on the bike stream. So yeah, across two days, around a $10,000 profit, obviously a result I'm happy with, but like I said earlier, it's really not that much of a result at all considering the size of those games. Of course, it's no small chunk of change, but you guys get what I'm saying. Anyway, that's a wrap for today's video. Don't forget about that meetup game coming up this Sunday in Las Vegas. I don't really do a ton of these meetup games, so if you've been meaning to take some of my chips, this is an excellent opportunity. All right, guys, as always, thank you for the support. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna go get some coffee and head to the gym. Until next time, good luck at the tables. Peace.